All right, let me know when we're rolling. We're rolling? We are rolling? We're live, dude. You done that? We are live. You can start like last time? No. Not a live, live. Oh, we are live. Okay, we're live. Because we are hanging out here in Grove, Oklahoma. That's right. Welcome back to the SMC podcast, four stop tour event, uh, FLW, of course. So, Ah, Oklahoma. It's where I uh, was actually born here. Andrew's right. from Oklahoma. We have Andrew on the on the panel today, <laughs> and we have uh, world famous John Cox on the panel today. Not from Oklahoma. Not you're not from Oklahoma. Oklahoma? No. no, but I'm you live. Texas. You are. But you live in Oklahoma. Yeah, I live in Oklahoma. So you're from Oklahoma now. Where did you pack your Texas. bag from? Texas. Texas. Oh, oh, Oklahoma. Yeah, I guess so. That's right. Yeah, yeah, That's right. it doesn't count. All right, you're <coughs> messing me up. I don't know, dude. I know. Texas, Oklahoma is not really the no, same thing. No, it's not the same thing. Yes, because Oklahoma is much That's better. That's like Oklahoma he's from Alabama. Alabama. Are you a Longhorn fan? <laughs> yeah, Longhorn or? Yeah, no, Ohio sure. State. Sorry. What? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, what? it's a long story. Boomer Sooner, baby. B Lat in the house. Champ is what I call him. This is his new name. Yeah, B Lat. Champ. <laughs> and of course, Tom Reddington. Not Champ. <laughs> 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 we are uh, we are here at Grand Lake, uh, Oklahoma. It's basically the end of March, first of April. We just got finished with. Uh, before I get into that, we just got finished with Seminole, and Champ here just put the total smackdown on all of us. It was a good week. It was a great week, dude. <laughs> I tell week. you, it was awesome to see. You look back at, at victories. And you look at when, like when you won at Red River, okay, that was a memorable tournament to me because it was like there was so much riding on that. Right. And right. when you won Seminole, it was such an awesome moment. Like, yeah. there's only a few times I ever watched somebody win a tournament. I literally get chills. Like, <laughs> yeah. that was yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm still, not gonna lie. When Brian, when Brian won, I was, I was so like, yeah. it was almost like I was like I had that feeling. Yeah. Like, you know, it was just, I was crying. Was like, oh, I know. Man, it, was, <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, I was still crying every time I see somebody share that on social yeah. media. Yeah. Like I watch it. Well, it's just like, like I wasn't there. Yeah. yeah. And I was there. I saw. I know what happened, and then I still cry again. Yeah. He almost threw up like several times. He kept walking around. He was pacing. He was all freaking yeah, out. Yeah, it was bad. It was. It was. It was a trip, man. I don't know if you even remember all, most of that. I bet it's all. Oh kind yeah, of I remember. No, but like that, that little oh, moment. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. I remember that. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, because I, I was like, dude, does it, am I dreaming? Is this really ha- like I really found the yeah. best fish on this lake? Yeah. Really? I just it, it was it was it was awesome. It was man. it was good, and when you know you talk about that tournament, and now we're here at Grand, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now. We all apologize for the level of suckness that we're about to throw down, <laughs> because this lake is fishing tough. Is it not? I mean, it what do you think, Tom? You, you're a Texas guy. You fish up in this region a little bit. What do you think? I know, it's tough, flat out tough, and it's one of those that uh, I kind of call it table setters. I mean, it, it's warming trend, and every I see Larry Nixon over there. He had an old. I watched a video of him years ago, and he always said the fishermen show up on the backs of the creeks before the fish do, and I think that's the case. Mm, like, that's a good point. Good one. Yeah, I mean, it, good one. it's man. Why didn't you tell me that one at the beginning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I tried to get outside of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there, the warming trend, this lake has big fish. Maybe it's not huge numbers, not what it used to be, but it's good. They're coming. I mean, Andrew's fishing it, lives up here. I mean, they're here. Yeah. Some, somebody's going to get them, but it could be tomorrow they turn on. Maybe it's two weeks from now, but it's tough right now. Yeah. Water temperatures were, when we got here, what were they, at 48? Yeah, 48, 49. And now they've creeped up. We've had a little bit of a warming trend the last couple of days. Water <laughs> temperatures now, in some of the pockets, are probably more like 62, 63. Main lake, probably 55, 58. Um, so it made it really, really tough, and and I, I agree with Tom. I think I think the I think the fish are going to start showing up in a lot of these places tomorrow. I think it's going to be guys are going to be a lot of people are going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I'm catching fish. At least we hope that's what happens. <laughs> well, you have to have hope. Yeah. If you don't have hope, dude, I think like, that's what happen. yeah. If you don't have hope, you can't get it done. Like yesterday, right. when I got off the water and I put the boat on the trailer, because every day in practice was bad for me, mm-hmm. and and I was like, man, well, I got tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm gonna. I look right. at my map. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. And then yesterday, when I knew there's no more practice, <laughs> and I put, then when it hit the trailer, I went from like this to like a negative level. <laughs> I was like, I just sat there for like. I rode the boat the whole way back to the truck. I mean, all the way back to the house. <laughs> they backed down, and I'm like, I'm st- I'm not getting out, dude. I just sat there, dust in my face and rocks and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was bad. But here's the conditions. Uh, warming trend, water about normal and falling just slightly. You know, what do you think? I mean, you fished here a bunch. I mean, give the breakdown of the lake right now, current conditions, and kind of what you think is going to happen the next couple of days. Well, I mean, if you think of it like this, 
fishermen notorious liars for the most part we all like always undersell what we're doing this week I, this is not the case like <laughs> yeah we've at, seen it on their face you know like <laughs> you know when guys are stopping you on the water that have never even had a spoken a word to you yeah and they're like dude is it really this bad or yeah. am i just missing something yeah. and, and i mean that's happened to every one of us all week um uh, it's really bad i mean guys are going out there not getting a bite all day not even just like short fish yeah and and i'm right there with everybody else like i mean it's just awful um condition wise i mean you would expect the, the bite to just be like on fire mm-hmm. i mean because the water's warming the fish should start pulling up but you know the thing is is we've had some big arctic blasts the last same month we've had a couple of them and i think it really knocked the fish back and, and the other thing is that i think we we fail to take into consideration on a tougher lake like this yeah that doesn't have the fish population is on saturday they had a big tournament here and they caught a lot of those fish that had just pulled up so i just don't know how fast these waves are pulling in you know to replenish those fish and i think that's the biggest problem is they caught they didn't catch like a ton let's just be honest there was 90 zeros in that deal yeah but you know it took eight <laughs> pounds to get a check and 27 won it which i'm assuming they caught them on the umbrella rig yeah. but <clears throat> though they caught a lot of those easy fish and it's really hard to get those fish it's more like resident up. fish or maybe yeah, one yeah ones that have been moves, up for a couple weeks up yeah a boat drives by yeah. and scares one that's suspended up on the bank for a minute <laughs> spinnerbait comes by and they eat it you know but but it is it, you know, it's funny because I've had like 15 people like stop, literally stop, pull up to me and ask. John hasn't had anybody pull up to him and ask. You know <laughs> I haven't why? seen anybody. That's his, yeah, seen anybody. <laughs> he, he's he, been he had a, he had a <laughs> snagger pull up and be yeah. like, what are you doing yeah. here? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> that guy was like, are you fishing the tournament on Grand? I'm like, yeah. This guy was like, where's Grand? <laughs> yeah, where's Grand now? Like, we went so far at rivers and <laughs> over <laughs> logs and in creeks. And still didn't, I don't think, caught that much up no. there at all. So three, three bites in yeah. three days. Oh, my gosh. Probably giants, though. Giant. Those three, those three did feel like good. I, yeah. Like, I wanted to crack them, but, like, they felt so big that I was just like, I got to shake that one just in case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might have been spoonbills. I don't know. Oh, God, yeah. that's funny. That's funny. You know, and, Tom, you talked about a tournament this morning at Keystone. You know, we're talking about <clears> – <throat> let, me, let, me, let me phrase it like this because I don't want to give – throw a lot of shade on Grand. Grand's a great lake. It's just we're, we're in that funky period where, you know, the water temperatures got down to, to a below normal level. Uh, the full moon came on. Uh, they had a lot of rain. The water rose. The water got muddy. A lot of factors happened which pushed those fish into a weird, funky stage. And it not only did it here, you know, when we first got here, we're like, oh, this lake is not, we're, we're having problems. Maybe it's us. Maybe it's just the lake. But Keystone and some of the other lakes around are not, they're not catching them, right? <laughs> yeah, I got a report. A buddy told me that... Uh, there was a 39-boat tournament over there, four fish weighed. Then Monday night, there was a Monday night jackpot, zero fish caught. Wow. Zero fish it. caught. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nobody weighed. Everybody Nobody got their money back. They, yeah, they, they got they the jar back got out of the truck. The money <laughs> Here's your money. Back. Yeah. Here's your money. That's yeah. bad. That's pretty much pretty much it so you know we did we did forget somebody you know in this podcast we have billy billy's back there billy's producing now we brought billy in as a as our executive <laughs> producer and uh he's keeping track of time and uh and all that good stuff so we, we might have to get billy's advice <laughs> yeah, he goes yeah he's like mm-hmm. yeah he's like oh that's what i'm supposed to be doing <laughs> yeah what time is it billy you got three minutes three minutes really wow all right so i don't know dude I mean, like, honestly, guys, this is going to shake up a lot. And every year, you know, there's a tournament or two that's tough right. that, that really shapes angler of the year, shapes uh, make people making the, the Forestwood Cup. And this is, I think, going to be one of those events where, the, I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to catch a keeper, dude. I mean, honestly, I, when I catch my first keeper tomorrow, I'm, I'm calling all of y'all. I'm calling Bill. I'm saying, Bill, I know I'm not supposed to use the phone, but I got to call all my buddies and my wife and my kids. I call I got to call everybody and say that I caught a fish. I got points because it's, it's tough. Oh, that's true. So if we don't catch anything, no points. Yeah, no, no points. points. No you points. have to oh, catch that, something that, to get points. Oh, yes. and that's a, yeah. that, that'll that knock you out of everything. Yes, yeah. so it's like you didn't show yeah, up. It's yeah. like you got disqualified. Yeah. I think it's an easy tournament to do well, man. As, as hard as it is, tough as it is, if you figure out one little thing, you got it. You can win the yeah. tournament. Yeah, you can win this tournament. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's like the opportunity is bigger here than it's ever yeah. been. Yeah. yeah. And it's a different scenario too. So it's it's different conditions. We've only been here what once is the tour in a long time. 
and it's fishing so tough that we could have all practiced in the same creek and then Andrew goes through there at just a different time does something a little bit different it doesn't have the history back there and you can have the mother load all to yourself whereas the other ones we go to there's so much history it's like Seminole last time people knew that okay Spring Creek's the big creek yep. all the history you can be on the mother load and you know, catch them there, and nobody have nobody around you. There, there's going to be some guys blasting big bags in this tournament for sure, but you're going to see the weights go drop off fast. So yeah. I'm hoping that we're all in that upper curve, but we know what? We're going to take a little break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the fishing tip in this next segment. Everybody's going to kind of throw out a fishing tip on tough conditions, a fishing tip for very tough conditions. So pay attention, guys, because we've all dealt with lakes that are a little funky. Maybe these tips right here will help us out. So we'll be right back. Hey guys, hey, that was good. The second segment, I need y'all to pick it up. Give me more, okay? Some excitement? Some excitement, man. Wake up. Some a enthusiasm? Bit. Dang, John. <laughs> Come on, be loud. Look, your collars are Dude, stop playing. It's kind of punchy. Oh, nobody's got a title. <laughs> get, the right. get it on tight. All right, you good? Okay. Scoot in, Tom. Come on, bro. All right? You good? Yeah, we're good. All right, Come we got on, about Doug. 30 seconds, we're going to roll. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back. Uh, I'm not so sure about Billy's new title. Um, I think he's going to be giving us a lot of grief throughout the year. Yeah. But I'd Takes say. title and runs with it. Yeah. Man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. <laughs> so I teased you guys with a little fishing tip. Uh, I think we're all going to talk about a fishing tip for tough, tough conditions. Again, we're all, dealt, we're all dealing with lakes that fish in a funky state, okay, at times. So hopefully these little tips will help us uh, or help you and me catch more fish. So, Andrew, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it over to you first. Alrighty, all right. So I actually mine's kind of a two part quick tip. Um, when when you're dealing with a yeah when fish are starting to pull up, there's a two two trains of thought that I actually go with, especially with dirty water that we're dealing with. You can either go finesse, you know, try to find the clearest water, go finesse, uh, whether it's a net rig, shaky head, a finesse jig, or you go really big. And, and a lot of times people don't equate like a really tough tournament with really big baits. But the way that I look at it, especially dirtier water, I look for some of the dirtiest water. I take like a big like game hog, like a magnum game hog, a gigantic spinner bait, like a one ounce spinner bait yeah. with a double skirt, like big bulky stuff. And a lot of times that'll get you those couple key bites. Even if that's the only two bites you get, that's gonna get you the, the right ones. Right. And that and that's the train of thought, either go with as many bites as you can get or go with the biggest fish that you can catch. And that's kind of what I do in these tough periods. Really? Big spinner bait. A lot uh, of... Yeah, like a big like brush hog type bait. Yeah. Like a big one, and I mean, and everybody else is throwing a little finesse. Like a little baby, like flip a lobster, like a baby rubber yeah, yeah, lobster. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> Did you ever see that? Mm -hmm. that uh, yeah, yeah. Man had the, yeah. It's like a lobster. It's like this big. I remember big. that. Yeah. It was. It was huge. Uh, was I always, I bought like some because I wanted to put them on the deck of my boat when I come <laughs> yeah. in for tournaments and I have it just sitting there always. Well, up. Oh, Ish had that Tora too. You remember that? Oh thing? yeah, yeah. <laughs> things yeah. like that, yeah, dude. Giant. Yeah, that thing didn't even look right, man. And he actually caught him on that thing. Not a tackle it was like a saltwater bait. Yeah, it was yeah. saltwater. Mm -hmm. Like baby squid. <laughs> I don't think he got that at a tackle shop. <laughs> he made that. <laughs> sorry. All right, sorry. Up, so, okay, okay, okay. All right, sorry. <laughs> Nobody got it the first time. I had to throw it out there to see who. I knew John would be the first one to wiggle. <laughs> All right, we're getting off track here. All right, John, throw out a fish. Yo, I don't. Do you even have a tough fishing tip condition uh, thing? Because I mean, I honestly, I, I was thinking the same exact thing Andrew was thinking. You know, talking about how you know in a tough tournament you can either you know downsize your line, yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, pull out your your shaky heads and, and you know your finesse worms, um, or you can go big and throw big baits. And uh, you know, I, and I, I think a, a tip for I mean, you either you either are going to fish one spot in this mm -hmm. tournament and you're going to wait for them fish to come to you or you're gonna run a million spots, you're gonna get gas, you're gonna keep moving, you're gonna try to key in on something that you think these fish should be moving to. Yeah, and, um, you know, that's it. And, then, and the, the biggest thing to do is, I think, is to just stay fresh. You know, mm -hmm. realize that, you know, you might've threw with that piece of wood, you might've threw with that dock, you might've threw with those rocks, you know, even earlier in that day. But if, if the bait's there and everything feels right, yeah. at any time, yeah. it's, and, you know, they're gonna show up and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, no, I agree. I think for me, <clears throat> For me, I look at it a couple ways, and, and actually, 
the tip that I'm going to give you guys is something that I didn't do for this tournament for some reason. That's kind of just hit me right now. <laughs> so I didn't do this, which is a great idea, and, and, and I just was thinking about it. So obviously, totally agree with what John and Andrew said about the bait stuff. But in a real tough tournament, if you want to do good or win, you need to look at the off the wall stuff a little bit, meaning the, the, the intake, the water intake down by the dam, the, the underwater bridge that, that is over here, or some irregularity on the lake that in a normal tournament wouldn't be a factor because you could pull up to that spot in a normal tournament and catch a couple two pounders or a three pounder or whatever, but it's not gonna end up doing any good because everybody else is smashing regular sized fish yeah, doing regular right. things. But in a tough tournament like this where your regular stuff isn't working, everybody's cranking the banks and going down in the back of the pockets and doing all the different things that we do, when there's two fish on that water intake and then there's a fish down on this pipe that comes out or a, a, a discharge pipe. I remember a discharge pipe at Wheeler right. when I, I almost won Wheeler one time out the discharge pipe there on the Decatur Flats. Right, right, right. And it was a very weird place to catch them. But I didn't need to catch 25 fish in the tournament. I needed to catch 20 over the course of four days and I ended up you know, doing good. So finding a regularity, kind of say, okay, I'm doing what everybody's doing, it's not working. Let me find four or five places that I can get one bite on, some weird place. And a lot of times those places will pull you through. Like I fished a bridge yesterday over an elk and I didn't catch a keeper, but I caught a little spotted bass and I might fish it again, might, might catch yeah, a, right. a keeper. But it's a it's a place that on a normal tournament you would never fish because yeah. everybody in the back of the creek still on spinner baits catching 20 pound bags and those places won't compete on a situation like that so look for irregularities look for something different because you'd be surprised at how far three or four or five fish can go in a tough tournament like this yeah that's good stuff um, for me I think it's really more knowing who I am as an angler what I'm good at I think in a tough Do you tournament, wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say I am Brian Latimer to a certain degree, do you, yes. Really, do you, have you done this? I <clears throat> am champ. Have you done that one yet? To a certain degree, I have. <laughs> do you flex in the mirror, too? Yeah. Yeah. And, like that. and then, yeah. He, then yeah. he hits his yeah. uh, middle note. Then he Seriously? hits his middle note. My though. mid note? Yeah, he he's been note. singing a lot. I will yeah. say yeah, that. He's been singing a lot. A lot. Yeah. But I like the singing. Billy used to sing, and now you're singing. And I like that. Billy stopped singing. I, yeah, I, don't I like know why. that, too. But yeah, I, I think you need to know who you are, what you're good at. And because tough terms, you got to stay right there mentally you got to keep it on the tracks mentally you can't be you know over here wondering should i be doing this should i be doing that so i think it's really important to hone those skills that you're really good at if you're good at throwing a shaky head in a tough tournament it'd be a good time to throw a shaky head yeah if you're good at cranking and it's a tournament where nothing else is working and the wheels are falling off that's a good, good tournament to stick something in your hands and stay with it so um i like to find areas where i like to fish I think it's not, for me, when it's tough like this, it's not about a certain type of bait, it's not about a certain type of uh, technique, but I like to find some water where it really turns me on. Like, where it's like, dude, I want to fish all Get of your hot bother. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know how you pull in the creek and you get that feeling, you're get like, nipply. oh, dude, you're I want to like, fish this, I want to go over there, oh, they might be there. I just think it's a, it's a good idea to fish an area that you, you have really hot and bothered about, <laughs> and then uh, it turns your nipples on. Um, what? I just said nipply. I mean, yeah, yeah, nipples. Nipples. Can we move on? Really <laughs> saying, yeah, this is. Anyway, know who you are as an angler. Know what you're yeah. good at. Stick with that one. It's I tough. am B Lat. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, Man, that, actually, that actually gave me confidence for tomorrow. I know. Dang. I'm ready, I'm ready I know. to go. So what are you going to go sight fish? Yeah, I'm going to go sight fish yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> actually, sight fish is probably going to be a big pattern this tournament. People are going to be running around looking. Yeah. If you yeah, catch two, right. it's like, oh, I see him oh, catch some over So sight yeah. fishing yeah. is going to play. You better hide those fish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I would just say what uh, b -Lat said earlier, I would piggyback on that, about the fact that this is the type of tournament that you can win. It's, oh, yeah, no doubt. And it, it's, the, it's the fish that are coming to you. Right now it's not happening. They're, it's The spawn's coming. It's two days from now. It's 30 days from now. But they're going to show up back there. Guys haven't really dialed it in. That's going to be the prevailing pattern. If you can get ahead of that and find a spot or maybe get a pattern of where they're starting to show up, you're going to have the prevailing pattern all to yourself. That time I won at Kentucky yeah. Lake, I was the first guy deep. I had every spot on Kentucky Lake to myself pretty much. Yeah. And, that, and that's how guys win. You get ahead of it. You were on a, a coming to spot when you win. Yeah. 
at Seminole. So it's the, you have to, if you just get on that net pattern and say, well, I can grind out maybe three a day and I'll, I'll save a few points. Yeah, you might save your tournament, but if you go back to the back of the creeks each day and check it, get those coming to fish, if you do stumble on it, might blow it out and win. And that's why one of these guys is going to say, man, it sucked, it sucked, it sucked. Yeah. Oh, I won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It still was terrible, though. Yeah. I only yeah. had 20 yeah. bites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 20 <laughs> bites. Yes. I know there's different fish attractors out there that you spray on your bait. And I'm wondering about the cock stews. Isn't that a good option? Oh, yeah, I mean, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that, by the way? It's kind of expensive. Is it really? It really is. Really? But it works great. You know, yeah. it soaks inside the worm. It helps it stand up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It I mean, I really don't, yeah, I really don't want anybody to really buy it because it works so good. That's kind of yeah. like me and kind of optics. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like people yeah. using yeah. Pan pan optics because. I agree right. with that completely. Yeah. I don't yeah. want people using pan yeah. optics. No. So, all right, good stuff. We're going to come back with another last segment of the day, and then we've got the meeting. And last segment, we're going to talk about uh, a story. Everybody's going to tell a story about a tough tournament that was memorable for them, whether they did good or bad. And you will you will not believe what's about to be told here with these crazy stories. So mm -hmm. stay tuned. Another little segment coming your way. We're rolling, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that Thanks for the countdown. Yeah. Wow. Here you go. Wow. So guys, we are back for for segment three. Story time, little story time. We talked about the tournament. We talked about fishing tips. Now it's uh, story time, and I've got, I've got a good one actually. But I'm going to start with Tom down here on this end. Let Andrew think about it. He was trying to come up with one. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking of several. I've had several rough ones where practice was weird, and tournament went bad, and then I have a couple of the tournament went good. But Tom, throw it at you. What's I will say before I tell that it's a quick story, but I used to guide, and when you fish every single day, you just have these ups and downs, and the waves come in, and you see it, and it's you just drive home three days in a row. It's just killing you. It sucks, it sucks, sucks. All of a sudden, you put one little puzzle piece together, and that's fun for a week, and I'm hoping that's ready to come here. But, like, Rayburn was a classic example for me. Not a good practice. I went down to pre-practice, found some stuff, water changed, fish didn't go, and I, one of the spots where I caught, had a bite on the tip of the point, I, Went there in the tournament, I stopped a little short of it, and I got bit before I got to my waypoint. Went up to the, the waypoint, couldn't get bit, so I dropped back to where the waypoint was. And this happy accident, I mean, there's like a mega school there. End up catching the crap out of them for four days. So usually it's, it's always a case of that. It's not like all of a sudden, oh, there's a brand new lure that <laughs> nobody discovered, or there's some magic place or something like that. It's all of a sudden, hey, I was using a... I was winding my spinnerbait really fast. I slowed it down and started catching them. I was fishing the front of the docks. I can't get them. All of a sudden, I went behind the docks. I found them. And I think most of these stories, that's probably going to be the theme. It, every once in a while, you stumble onto something crazy or they're coming to, but usually it's you're this close yeah. to really catching them. Mm -hmm. and, and what's going to drive us crazy is day three and day four, we're going to watch FLW Live, and it's going to be somebody. It'll stuff. be a spinnerbait. <laughs> it'll be a jig. Yeah. It'll be a square bill, All I'm the not same stuff. I'm, I'm not going to. If I'm not in the, I'm not in the final day. I'm not watching yeah. FLW Live this tournament just because. <laughs> it'll be embarrassing. Just because. Y'all yeah, yeah, go ahead and watch it because it'll be great. But I'm telling you, I'm not watching it because it's. It's going to look it's so gonna easy. It's going to make me so mad. I'm going to yeah. just go yeah. crazy. Yeah, it'll be awful. What do you think, be like? Um, so, I had a tournament two years ago. Yeah. It was um, AAA open open on Douglas. Mm -hmm. Same thing as practice here. Never caught a limit three days of practice. Never caught five bass. I don't think I caught five bass in the three days combined. <laughs> just riding around, riding around. Took that same mental concept that I just told you about. I was like, dude, I'm going to the river. I, if I'm going to lose this week, I'm going to lose fishing the way I like to fish. There was a rip wrap up the river. And I, I never fished it in practice. I just kind of set my eyes on it. I was like, oh, that looks cool. We'll probably, you know, make a little pass through there in the tournament. And I fished around two or three hours, first part of the tournament, not a bite. Went up there to the rip wrap, almost won the tournament over the next three days. Really? Uh, first day I weighed in like 14, which is huge on Douglas in the fall. That's like catching 25 here. And then I was like in 12th place first day, second, uh, moved up to fifth on third day. Really? On second day. Especially in the rip wrap. Fishing this one place, then I just I was like, that looks cool. For like something I want to spend yeah. time on. Yeah. And then ended up finishing third in the tournament. Really? I ain't caught five in three days, dude. Three days. I ain't caught five. And then almost one. 
So that's good. So you just yeah. you had nothing. Nothing. You went and just fished where you're comfortable, what you like. Yeah, yeah. Which you had confidence in and just said, I'm going for it. Yeah, but when I say nothing, I'm not talking about, well, I had this little, you know, a lot of times we say, well, it's tough. Yeah. But yeah, you, you, you caught one doing something, you're like, that's going to be yeah. good, but I got nothing else. I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything at that's all. That's exactly how this tournament is. Yeah. Like, I don't think any of us really have an idea of where we're going to start or. Well, I'm starting on the Ripper up in Elk River now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to Cherokee yeah. right now. Actually, yeah. I'm gonna, it's going to be quite a ways to drive, but I'm going there now. Go yeah. ahead and get ahead of the game. Yeah, the, the yeah. other Cherokee. Yeah. Yes. Not Grand. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, Lake. So here's here's a crazy one for you. And I don't like talking about this one ever, really, but it is true uh, that I actually double zeroed in a tournament one time. Oh, my God. In a tour event. Back in like 19, Dang. no, 2002, one or two. Of all places, it was Pascula River where I had won the first time we went there, won the tournament. The second time we went there, I double zeroed. And it was a weird, and I didn't know much about fishing back then. As far, I mean, I was just a Florida fisherman. I just threw a lipless crankbait, a worm, a spinnerbait, and a buzzbait. And that's just what I did. Sounds like me now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know how to make adjustments or do anything. But in practice, I went over. And, and the reason I didn't do as good that year, too, was they, they took uh, Mobile Bay out of the equation. You couldn't right. go to Mobile that year. So we had to stay over in Pascula area. So I went over to the Bluxy River. And, uh, and in practice, I was shaking a lot of them off, too. I had like a dozen to 15 bites a day. So, I mean, they weren't big, but I was like, okay, you know. It's not going to take much to win this tournament, um, but it'll be fine. I go out the first day. I never had a bite. I went back to the same areas. Now there's tide there and all that, so I didn't understand tides as much as I do now. But for whatever reason, it didn't happen. Go out the second day. Didn't catch another. Didn't catch fish either. So I double zeroed for the tournament, and it was right after I, you know, following year or two years after I won that exact tournament. So. Um, Definitely the worst I ever did, but it was a good practice, you know. And I've had tough practices like this where things, you know, just exactly what everybody's saying, where you take a tough practice and you turn it into something. And and I think confidence, I think confidence is the main key, right? You get yourself in a jam, go fish with your confidence in, confident in, and fish what you like, and you've got a better chance, yeah, you, you know, instead of chasing your tail. All you got tail. is your confidence. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Especially like this, all you got. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I double zeroed at Pascula River. Yeah, I'll never talk about it again. But just I went ahead and told you all that. It happened. It happened. Did they make Mobile off limits because you won there the year before? I think so. <laughs> I think so. I, I was wonder. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. I think they did. Well, boys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can't, you go, can't over go over Mobile Bay anymore. Yeah. Sorry, Scott. No, they made it off limits because I drove in the ocean for like 70 miles right. under Dolphin Island Bridge, like past oil freighters. I, I mean, it was it was, a, it was a yeah. crazy, crazy event to get there. And I wasn't the only one running there. There was, I think, seven of the top ten were over there. Yeah, but he didn't make the top ten. I remember. But, yeah, we all ran over there. Gerald How old Swindle. were you then? Uh, I just graduated from high school, so yeah. like probably 19, yeah. 18, yeah. 19. Yeah, I was like 20, 20, 21, 22, so. All right. All right, mine's quick, but so there was two tournaments. They were probably the two biggest tournaments of my life. I went out there, couldn't get nothing going. One was on the Red River, could not catch anything. And I was like, I want to get off this lake. And uh, and I found my culvert pipe and went through it and, you know, won the tournament. So that was, you know, that was just... It, you weren't catching that. anything. I wasn't like, catching anything. I was running everywhere. I'm like, I got to get off this lake, off this river. Right. This river's so bad. Yeah. I have to get off of it. I remember and, that. Right. I ended up going in there and winning, which was just, it was just amazing. And then when we went uh, went to Wheeler that time, I was running all over Wheeler. You know, I was try, trying out deep, shallow, everything. Couldn't catch anything. I'm like, I am getting off this lake as far as I could. You know, I ended up going up a creek and getting a few bites in practice and end up winning the tournament up there. So it's just, you know, but the problem, like here, there's no culvert pipes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I haven't had any bites up any of the rivers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's only spoonbill cat. Yeah, there's only spoonbills up there. And a whole bunch of people fishing off the bank. Yep. Oh, that's crazy, so. dude. That's crazy. I remember yeah. the culvert. I remember driving by the culvert in practice, mm-hmm. looking in there, going, mm. "What if I could get my boat in there?" And it was like <laughs> I drove, I trolling motored up to it, and it went like 
instantly was stuck. I was, nah, I backed out. Yeah. Then I'll yeah. see footage of you going, ah, oh, yeah. That's good. the difference with Google Earth, too, changed a lot of that because there was stuff that people, right. what's back there? Now well, yeah, you pull up on your phone, like, oh. Right. You know? Yeah, that was like the beginning of it, I think. Yeah. That whole, the year before that and that year was like when you first had it on your phone. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, mine was uh, actually this year. So the first term of the, I had knee surgery like in November, uh-huh. I think, late November. And I hadn't been on the water at all. I, I kind of stayed off, had ACL surgery on my left knee. Well, I went to Amistad and I didn't practice. And I'd I never, this, yeah. I'd never, I'd never gone to a tournament and didn't practice. It was a coast event. Right. And I mean, I'd fished Amistad a few times, right. but like, I had no clue. Like I just showed up and went fishing. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've always said I wanted to do that because my practice is typically better than the tournament. Right. You know, like you yeah. win practice. And I was like, oh, this would be great. Like, I'll catch them. Well, the first day I only caught four fish, and I caught three of those fish in the last seven or eight minutes. And I lost number five, and I had to go, and I made it in with 10 seconds left. And the second day, I didn't even go to that spot. I was like, I'm just going to go over here to this one canyon that I'd caught them in before. I said, I'm going to go away from every boat that I see. And I go back there, and there all these boats are in this back. And I was like, I'm just going to go throw a deep diving crankbait along this grass line that I just grabbed and yeah. caught. And I caught 14 pounds, which was a big bag yeah. in that tournament. And I, I jumped up in the, like, in the teens or 20s. But I always remember that one just because I never That's made a cast cool. of practice. No practice and and so. it was it just I went fishing and just, like, fished off instinct. Like what B-Light said, this, just go fish my been confidence. a great tournament to show up no practice. No, I don't well, think so. If you would have – no. <laughs> Guaranteed. You would have showed us today and said, oh, yeah. man, you yeah, you'd be, you'd be you'd be fresh. Fresh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you would just go out there and yeah. probably wreck them. But right now, we're all just spun out. But anyways, you know, guys, thanks for hanging out. It's time to wrap this thing up. It's time to go prepare, get the meeting done, go get our boats ready. Thanks, guys, for hanging out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Good job, everybody. So thanks for watching. We're gone. We'll see you soon. And tournament videos and other stuff related to Grand Lake is going to be dropping soon, so be sure to subscribe and turn on your notification. We'll see you. Bye!